Okay guys, this video is meant to be a review video or kind of a practice exam for the anatomy and physiology lab practical on the muscles and joints. Um, this is using the models that would still or actually be used in the in-person lab practical, but this version is just like what you'll see on the online course. So in my online AMP, your lab practical will have questions that look just like this. There won't be as many as we see on here because I'm reviewing all sorts of different models and joints. Um, there will only be about 50 questions on your lab practical and there's you know almost 80 slides here, but this will give you a good review for the lab exam. Again, on muscles and joints. Identify the muscle at the tip of the pointer. Okay, this right here is pointing to this kind of rectangular strap-like muscle, and that muscle is the masseter. Right, the masseter. It's the muscle that we use for mastication or chewing. When you clench your jaw, you can feel it on the side of your cheeks. So that's the masseter. Um, this is pointing to a deeper muscle that's in the cheek, right? So this muscle, the tip of the pointer, you can only see this part of it because there are other muscles that are on top of it. Um, but it is a deep muscle in the cheek. And remember that the cheek is referred to as buccal. So this muscle is named the buccinator. The buccinator. Okay, so the masseter was this superficial one. The buccinator is this deeper little triangle that you drop down into. Here, this is pointing to um, this muscle here, a muscle of the scalp that's right in this region above the ear. Um, remember that bone that's right there is called the temporal bone, and this region is the temporal region. So that makes sense that this muscle is the temporalis. Okay, the temporalis. There are um, a few different muscles that we need to know in the head or on the scalp, and they're all named based off of the region that they're in or the bone that's under them. So like frontalis, temporalis, occipitalis. Okay, pretty easy. This is pointing to this um, superficial strap. Oops, it kind of goes like this, actually. This superficial strap-like muscle that's in the neck. If you twist your neck sideways, you can see it um, bulge. It's really easy to see here on the side of the neck. It starts back behind the ear, and then it comes forward, and it attaches to the sternum and the clavicle. Um, and the muscle is just named based off of the attachments that it has. The muscle is called the sternocleidomastoid. Okay, sternocleidomastoid. Um, the reason for that is it connects to the sternum right here. It is attaches to the clavicle right here. And then at the top here behind the ear, it attaches to the mastoid process, which remember was like that big process at the bottom of the skull. Okay, so the sternocleidomastoid. There are other muscles in the neck that we need to know that are more um, deep. So if you pull off that sternocleidomastoid, underneath it, you'll see the scalenes, the anterior, middle, and posterior scalenes. Um, <clears throat> but I would show you that on a, a, a deeper model, not on this superficial model. Um, <clears throat> so we're back to the face here. There are three of these like strap-like muscles. One, two, three, that you guys need to know. Um, the top two attached to the zygomatic bone. Those are zygomaticus muscles. But this one that goes straight out to the side is called Resorius. Okay, Resorius. This is not one of the zygomaticus muscles. It's shaped like them, but it does not go up to the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone is the cheekbone up here. This is the zygomatic bone. This does not go anywhere near it. So this one that goes straight out from the side of the mouth is Resorius. Here we go. These are the muscles that connect to the zygomatic bone. And again, there are two of them. 
This one right here is the inferior most one. And then there's one just above it right up here. They both go up either from like the corner of the mouth or the top of the mouth and go up to the zygomatic bone. They're both zygomaticus. We have zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major. This is the bottom of the two. So is zygomaticus major. Zygomaticus, because it connects to the zygomatic bone, major. We have a few different muscles. They, we have two of them, a minor and a major. You can remember minor over major. Hey, the minor is the one on top, the major is the one on bottom for zygomaticus, um, for rhomboid minor and major. Um, I'm trying to think for what else. I can't think of them right now, but I'll show you as we get there. Um, but minor over major. This is pointing to a circular muscle that circles around the eye. Um, from the side, you can only see half of the circle, but it goes around the eye like that and circles all the way around. Um, we have one around each eye. We also have a muscle that circles around the mouth. And all of those circle muscles are called orbicularis. And then we just have to say if it's around the eye or the mouth. So this one is pointing to the circle that's around the eye. So it is called orbicularis oculi. Oculi, like ocular, right? Ocular is the eye. So orbicularis oculi orbits around the eye. This is pointing to another one of the scalp muscles. Remember before we looked at the temporalis, which is on the side by the temporal region. This is pointing to the muscle that's right here in the forehead in the frontal region. And there's a couple different ways we can name this. We can just call this frontalis, or you can call it the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis. Um, technically, this is connected as one muscle from the occipital region back to up here to the frontal region. All of that is considered one muscle and it has two bellies or parts that are connected. Um, this is pointing to the frontal belly because it's in the frontal region. And then back here in the occipital region, that's the occipital belly. And the two muscles are connected by what's called an aponeurosis. So all of this gray that you see under here, that's showing you an aponeurosis, which is kind of like a tendon. Um, it's filled with collagen and connective tissue. It's just a flat sheet. Instead of like a tight bundle of a tendon, it's a really flat sheet of connective tissue um, that forms that aponeurosis. So you've got muscle in the front and that's connected to muscle in the back. Right. This specifically is pointing to the frontal belly or the frontalis. Um, now we are moving down to the back. Um, when we look at the back, we have two muscles that are very superficial. Um, this one up here, which is shaped like a kite right, or shaped like a trapezoid. Go back to your geometry. That's a trapezoid. Um, so we call that trapezius. There are a bunch of other muscles that we need to know too that are deep to this. They're underneath this. So we have to pull this off and look underneath it to see the other muscles. But this right here is the trapezius. That's what when people work out their traps, um, they're working out like you see the bulge like right here in the back of the shoulders. It's like a, a Ninja Turtle bulge. Those are the traps that they're working out. This is the other superficial muscle of the back. So if you saw this question, identify the muscle at the tip of the pointer. That's pointing to this muscle. Right, it goes like this. All of this superficial area in the lower back, right, and the sides. Um, and lower back. This is called latissimus dorsi. Okay, I think latissimus, like it goes towards the lateral sides, dorsi is dorsal, 
right? Dorsals, the back. When people talk about working out their lats, right? They're talking about latissimus dorsi. Okay, so this is the superficial muscle of the lower back. Here we see um, the superficial muscles of the front of the trunk. This is pointing to the superficial muscle of the pectoral region, right? The pectoral region is the chest region here. Um, and this muscle is named pectoralis major. The pectoralis major. This is the large of the pectoral muscles. So when people work out their pecs, right, they're working out their chest muscles right here. Pectoralis major. We'll see pectoralis minor in a second. It's the smaller one. Um, it's underneath this. So we have to pull pectoralis major off and then we'll see minor underneath. Here, this is pointing to uh, the abdominal muscles. We have three layers of um, abdominal muscles um, that are present like on the sides over here. And then we have this, this central region of abdominal muscles in the middle. All of these abdominal muscles are named based off of the direction that the fibers go. Um, this muscle here is that this is pointing to, which it's actually like all of these little bands that are interconnected. See these that go straight up and down the center of the abdomen? This is rectus abdominis. Um, rectus abdominis. And um, rectus, because the fibers are going straight up and down. Okay, we'll see that oblique fibers go diagonal and transverse fibers go horizontal. Okay, so rectus are vertical fibers that go straight up and down. Those are like when you have a six pack or like a two pack in my case. Um, the six pack is from the rectus abdominis muscles. This is pointing to um, one of the muscles of the thigh. Okay, so identify the muscle at the tip of the pointer. When I taught you guys the muscles of the thigh, I taught you to break them up into sections, right? The anterior thigh, the inner thigh, and the posterior thigh. So if we look at the anterior thigh, um, there were like four major muscles here. One, two, three, and then there's one underneath that's a deep muscle. Okay, this muscle right here, I know is one of the vastus muscles. We have a vastus medialis, intermedius, and lateralis. This is on the medial side of the leg, right? The middle is medial, so this is towards the inside of the leg. So this is the vastus medialis. Vastus medialis on the medial side of the leg. If I looked over here on the outside, that would be vastus lateralis. This, again, we're looking at the same kind of area on the leg. Um, we just looked at this one, which was the vastus medialis, right? And I told you guys that this one on the outside of the leg would have been the lateralis. This is pointing to the superficial muscle in the middle of the leg. Don't get confused. That is not the vastus intermedius. The vastus intermedius is underneath this, okay? So I would have to pull this muscle off in order to show you the vastus intermedius. What this muscle is pointing to is called the rectus femoris. Okay, femoris, it's on top of the femur. Okay, and all four of those muscles together, all three of the vastus plus the rectus femoris, those are the quads, right? When you talk about like working your quads, you extend your knee and that extension works your quads. Um, these are your quads. So this question is pointing to the rectus femoris. This is this um, superficial ribbon-like muscle that wraps around the thigh. Um, it starts right here in the front of the thigh and it wraps around the medial side of the thigh. Um, it's a really long ribbon. And the word, the name of the muscle is kind of pretty. It's kind of this long ribbon-like word. 
Um, this muscle is called sartorius. Sartorius. Okay? So sartorius would be the answer to this question. Um, I think I took this off of you guys's. I don't think I required you to know it. Um, I don't think I required you guys to know it, um, but just in case, um, or if you guys were required to know this, um, this muscle right here that this is pointing to is called iliacus. The iliacus, it's on the ilium, right? Think about the pelvic bones. You have got the ilium, or is this like top part of, um, sorry, the top part of the pelvic bone that's curved up there? That's the ilium. So this is in like lining the um, iliac fossa, lining the inside of the ilium is the iliacus. This other muscle here that's, that's joined with it or associated with it, this muscle right here would be the psoas major. Okay, so the answer to this question would be iliacus. If I were pointing here instead, that would be the psoas major. We mentioned this before. Um, this is referring to one of the quadriceps muscles. Um, and this is the muscle that's on the lateral side of the thigh, right? Remember, this is the, the inside of the thigh over here. That's medial, right? This is on the, like, look at the foot, the pinky side, right? This is the outside, the lateral side. So this muscle is the vastus lateralis. Here, this is down, um, moving down to the bottom of the leg. Right, so always kind of make sure you have your bearings, you guys. Like you can see, this is the kneecap right here at the top. Right, you can see down here, this is the very beginning of the foot. So like the ankle and the foot. So this must be looking at the, um, the bottom of the leg. And the bottom of the leg, again, we kind of split up into sections. I had you guys name these three right here in the front of the leg. One, two, three. And then if we flip it around the back, there's a couple more muscles back there that you guys needed to know. Um, so looking at these right here, the one in the very front is lining the tibia, right? This is the tibia right here, the medial bone in the leg. Um, just remember your leg, right? The medial bone in the leg is the tibia, and then the lateral bone that's like out here is the fibula, because the muscles are named after the bones. So the tibia and the fibula. Um, this first muscle right over here is the tibialis anterior. Okay, but this, this question right here is pointing to the next one over. And if you look at the next muscle over um, and look at where it extends down to, if you follow it all the way down, you keep coming, follow it down, you'll notice these tendons right here branch out like that right, to go down towards the toes. Um, and if you think about like extending your toes, that will help you name this muscle. This muscle here is the extensor digitorum longus. Okay, the extensor digitorum longus. We have an extensor digitorum that's very similar that's in our forearm. It's at the back of the, the forearm here, the back of the antebrachial region, and it comes down the middle, and then it has those little tendons that go out to our fingers, which are also digits. So that's just the extensor digitorum. This one's longer because it's in the leg. So it's the extensor digitorum longus. Okay, so the way I remember that is these tendons that go out towards the digits or the toes. Extensor digitorum longus. Um, this is moving up to the top of the thigh again, right? If you look here, like this is the sacrum, the lumbar region. You can see the butt back here, right? So this is all like the pelvis, and this is the thigh. Um, we're looking at the medial aspect of the thigh, or the inside of the thigh. And there were three muscles right here that you guys needed to know on the inside of the thigh, right? One here, one here, and then one here. 
Um, this is pointing to this muscle in the very front of the thigh, and that's called the adductor longus. We also have an adductor magnus. So like longus is long, magnus is wide. Um, adduct, to adduct something is to bring it to the midline. So like the arm, that's adduction. Okay, abduction with a B is bringing it up towards the top. Adduction is bringing it down towards the body. Think like adding it to the body. Um, we can adduct our thigh, right? Like if you move your thigh in, that's adduction. Moving it out is abduction. So these muscles in the inner thigh, abduct. Um, there are like machines at the gym when you pull your legs in like that, you're adducting, you're working those muscles in like your inner thigh. So this is adductor longus. This one back here is adductor magnus. This, we're still in the same place, still, still in the inner thigh. We did adductor longus last time. Now we're moving in a little bit and we're doing this superficial muscle right here. And that muscle is gracilis. Okay, gracilis. Again, this is down the lower leg again. Okay, you can see the foot down here. Hey, okay, this, I can see the tibia, right, the bone in the medial um, leg. This is pointing to one of the muscles at the back of the leg. Okay, we have like the heel, you see the heel back here? So that's the back of the leg. There were two large muscles back there um, that are pretty easy to identify. There's this superficial one and then the one underneath. This question, right, the tip of the pointer is pointing to this muscle right here, the one that's underneath. That is the soleus. Hey, okay, the soleus. Um, this is the butt. Okay, and there were um, two different muscles in the butt that you guys need to know. When you work out your butt, you work out your glutes, right? Your glutes. This region is the gluteal region. So the muscles are gluteus. Um, there's a gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, and there's actually a gluteus minimus, but you don't have to know that one. This is the big one. So this is maximus. Um, gluteus maximus goes like this. Okay, gluteus maximus. Gluteus medius is like up here. Um, and we can actually pull off this maximus and then you can see the middle one better. This is moving down to the back of the thigh, right? You can see the popliteal region or the back of the knee right there. You can see the butt, right? So obviously you're looking at the back of the leg. Um, there were three major muscles in the back of the leg. We have one on this side, okay, one on the lateral side, and then on the medial side, there are two muscles stacked on top of each other. This is the one on top, and then you can kind of see like right here, you can see the other one kind of coming out underneath it. Okay, so this is pointing to the one on top, the superficial one. That is the semi-tendinosis, semi-tendinosis. The one underneath is the semi-membranosis. Okay, so semi-tendinosis is on top. Um, this is back down the lower leg, right? You can see the foot right here. This is the lateral side of the foot right here. Okay, so we're looking at the outside of the leg the lateral aspect of the leg. And I told you guys that the bone on the outside of the leg was the fibula. Okay, this muscle goes right along with that. The muscle that's right here outside the fibula is the fibularis longus. Okay, the fibularis longus. The one um, by the tibia is the tibialis anterior. It's in the very front of the leg and it's by the tibia. The fibularis longus is along the outside of the leg by the fibula. This is the muscle that um, the gluteus medius when we've taken off the big one, right? So the gluteus maximus was right here over top of this. 
but if we pull it off here you can still see the hip bone right here right the iliac crest the hip bone um, and you can see the gluteus medius better right so the butt, butt region is gluteal so this is gluteus and this is the middle sized one so medius this is showing at the front of the thigh again right you can see like this up here is the pelvis comes down you can see the tensor fascia lata up here um, these are where the quadriceps muscles are you can see the vastus medialis right here and the vastus lateralis on the outside but the rectus femoris has been removed okay there should be a muscle right here on the front of the thigh we don't have a hole on the front of our thigh right the rectus femoris goes there but we removed the rectus femoris and now you can see the muscle underneath remember the muscle underneath is the vastus intermedius okay the vastus intermedius the intermediate one uh, this is showing us the arm right you can see the outside of the arm literally like the shoulder um, you can see the bones up here the clavicle and then the scapula goes back here towards the back um, so this is the upper arm up here and this is the shoulder muscle this nice strong um, triangular shaped shoulder muscle up here is your deltoid and the deltoid muscle um, moving down to the arm then you guys can see the muscles of the upper arm here um, in the front you can see the biceps brachii underneath that the brachialis and then back here the triceps brachii but we'll see those on other questions this one would be the deltoid speaking of um, this is pointing to this middle muscle in the arm okay it's not the one in the front it's not the one in the back it's the middle muscle of the arm and that's the brachialis brachialis okay brachial is the arm the upper arm so brachialis don't get confused there's also a muscle called the brachioradialis but that's down in the forearm okay the brachioradialis because the radius is in the forearm brachialis is up here um, in the upper arm this is down to the um, the back of the arm, back of the forearm, um, right? You can see the, the hand right here and kind of look at like the way the fingers are curling down. Okay, the fingers are curling down like that. So that must be looking at the back of the arm. They can't curl the other way. So you're looking down the back of the arm. Um, when we look at the, the forearm here, we have two different compartments. The flexor compartment, which is on the palm side, and the extensor compartment, which is on the dorsal, dorsal side of the hand, the back of the hand. Okay, because that's, you know, when you extend the wrist, you use your, the muscles in the back. When you flex, you use the muscles in the front. Okay, so the flexors in the front, extensors are in the back. Um, this muscle is in the middle here. And if you follow it down, notice these tendons that go down, kind of split out and go down towards the fingers. Okay, so they extend the digits. So this is the extensor digitorum. This is like the one in the leg, remember, that's got those tendons that go down towards the toes? That was the extensor digitorum longus. This is the one in the back of the hand, extensor digitorum. Um, we have a muscle on either side of the extensor digitorum that you guys have to know. There's this one right here that's on the pinky side, right? If you look down here, this is on the pinky side. Um, and then there's going to be one over on the thumb side as well. This, this model, it's missing a muscle. There's one over here on the thumb side too. Um, they're both extensors, one on the pinky side, one on the thumb side. Okay? And these are named based off of which side they're on. This muscle is the extensor carpi ulnaris this name makes complete sense extensor it's on the in the extensor compartment at the back of the hand 
carpi because it comes down by the wrist, right? Like carpal. Ulnaris because it's on the side of the ulna. Okay, I told you guys bones are really important. Um, the ulna is on the pinky side. The radius is on the thumb side. So the muscles that say ulnaris are going to be on the pinky side of the arm. The muscles that say radialis are going to be on the thumb side. Um, this is coming back up to the top of the arm, right? You're looking at like the back of the upper arm and then coming up to the back right here. Um, <clears throat> the muscles that are right up here, up like up top right here, are surrounding the scapula. The scapula is the shoulder blade. Um, and the shoulder blade is like inside of these muscles. Uh, the shoulder blade has the spine of the scapula that comes like this. Okay, so that, that bone part that you see right there is the spine of the scapula. And we have a muscle that sits below the spine. And then you'll see there's also a muscle up here that sits above the spine. Okay, the one that sits above the spine is the supraspinatus, right? Spine spinatus. This one is below the spine, though. So this muscle that this question is pointing to is the infraspinatus. Infraspinatus is below the spine. Okay, there's so the infraspinatus is here. There's also this muscle here and this muscle here. Um, those muscles are teres minor and teres major. And remember, just like for zygomaticus, minor over major. So this is teres minor. This one down here is teres major. Okay, and then again, infraspinatus would be the answer to this question. Here we go. What do you know? Um, again, we said the other two muscles down here were teres minor and teres major. So the answer to this question would be teres major. Um, this is showing us the muscles of um, the upper arm, right? We're still looking at the arm here. Um, this is like the, the antecubital region, the elbow region right there. Um, and this is the upper arm. We're looking at the front of the upper arm. And this muscle that we see right here is the biceps brachii. Um, the reason it's called biceps, bi means two. And if you could see the full, like the top of this, there's one head that goes like this, and there's another head here. There's a long head and a short head. It's like two beginnings to the muscle. Brachy means arm, so biceps brachy. Um, that's the muscle in the front of the arm here that you use to flex the elbow. The back of the arm has the triceps brachy. That's what we use to extend the elbow. So biceps brachy flexes, triceps brachy extends. And then again, right in the middle, we have the brachialis. Um, so still looking at the arm here, right? The same exact view that we just looked at. So we have the biceps brachy right here. Um, this is showing us this muscle here that sits underneath the scapula, right? Remember at the very top of the arm here, we've got all these muscles that are surrounding the scapula. A little bit ago, we looked at the muscles that are behind the scapula right, that are posterior to the scapula, the supraspinatus and infraspinatus. This is looking deep to the scapula, underneath the scapula. And this muscle that sits underneath the scapula is called the subscapularis. Hey, the subscapularis, which literally like means beneath the scapula. Here, um, when we talked about the forearm, there are so many muscles, but the way I tell you guys to learn them is to learn the two muscles right here by the elbow, right? Like the antebrachial region, there's two muscles that make a V right here. Learn those. Then you have to learn three that go around the back of the hand and three that go around the front or the back of the forearm, three that go around the front of the forearm, okay? And it's easy then. So these two right here, um, are the brachioradialis and the pronator teres. Okay, this one on this side, the smaller of the two, is the pronator 
teres. Okay, so teres major and minor are up here. Pronator teres is right here. The other muscle, this large one right here, is the brachioradialis. Remember I told you brachialis is in the upper arm, brachioradialis is in the lower arm. Okay, because it goes down by the radius, radialis. So here you go. This one is the brachioradialis. Okay, so you've got these two, and then remember after that, we've got the flexors on the front, the extensors on the back. So here you're looking at the, the front of the forearm, right? You can see the palm of the hand right here. Right? The way the fingers are kind of curling up a little bit shows you that that's the palm of the hand. So we already named these two muscles right here that are at the elbow. And then I told you there are three here on the palm that you guys need to know. One, two, three. Okay, this is pointing to the one in the middle. And if you follow the one in the middle, it comes all the way down to the center of the palm. So this is the palmaris longus. Palmaris longus comes down to the center of the palm. The other two are flexors and they're just named after whether they're on the radius side or the ulna side. We'll, talk, we'll look at them in a second, I'm sure. Okay, speaking of, so we just named the palmaris longus, right? This one in the middle was the palmaris longus. So now we're naming this one over here that's on the side of the thumb. And this is the flexor carpi radialis. Okay, the flexor carpi radialis. It's a flexor because it is on the flexor side. Okay, carpi because it comes down to the carpal region, the wrist. Radialis because it's on the same side as the thumb. Okay. Then this is on the other side, right? So we already named the pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus. Now this is the flexor that's on the pinky side. So flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris. Um, here we're going around towards the back of the hand. Okay, we just looked at all of them on the palm side. This is moving around towards the back of the hand back here. We already named these two right here at the elbow, right? We've already taken those off the plate. That muscle's already named. So now you're moving back towards the three muscles that are on the extensor side, okay? So the three muscles that are on the extensor side. Here's the first one. You already named the one in the middle, the extensor digitorum. And then there's one on the pinky side. So this is on the thumb side. It's on the back, so it's an extensor. Okay, carpi. And then it's on the thumb side, so it's radialis. Technically, there's longus and brevis. I don't care that you say the difference, right? Like there's a short one and then a long one. You can just call them both extensor carpi radialis. Um, here, we've already looked at this before, but this is on the palm side of a hand. So this is flexor, carpi, it's on the pinky side, so ulnaris. Okay, remember we have the one that goes down the center of the palm right here. We have the one on the thumb side, and then this is the one on the pinky side. So flexor, carpi, ulnaris. If you follow those rules, then you're going to know it no matter what, like no matter which way. Okay, so on this one, you guys are looking at the back of the upper arm, right? We already looked up here at the muscles that are surrounding the scapula. Remember the infraspinatus, teres minor, and teres major. Now you're moving down to the back of the upper arm. 
a, the back of the upper arm has the series of muscles that are referred to as triceps brachii. Triceps brachii. Remember, in the front was biceps brachii. In the back, we have triceps brachii. Tri meaning three, and there are three heads. Um, but you guys can just know them all together as um, all together as triceps brachii. Um, so identify the muscle at the tip of the pointer. If we look at this one, we're looking at the anterior um, the anterior trunk again. We already named this large pectoral muscle here, which was pectoralis major. If you look at the other side of the model, you can see that that's been pulled off and you can see underneath. And this is pointing to pectoralis minor. So pectoralis major is on top, pectoralis minor is underneath. Um, on this model in general, you guys can see that like this side right here is showing you the superficial muscles. And then this other side is showing you what's underneath. So when you pull the superficial muscles off, what do we see underneath it? And that's going to be important for the abdominal muscles. So speaking of the abdominal muscles, um, we looked at this on the, uh, the other model in the beginning, but this is showing us the vertical muscles in the center of the abdomen. And those are referred to rectus. abdominis. A rectus meaning the fibers are straight up and down. Abdominis because it's the abdomen. Um, we also have two layers of um, oblique muscles. Oblique meaning that the fibers are going diagonally. So this side over here which is the superficial side we have the external obliques. Okay, external oblique. Um, this side that's deeper, we have um, the internal obliques. Okay, so this would be the internal oblique. And these muscles are on both sides. So like if this side, if we pulled this external oblique off, we would see the internal oblique underneath. And then underneath that, we have another muscle that I'll show you in a second. Hey, but this question here is pointing to the internal oblique. Here, um, this is pointing to the muscles that are between the ribs, right? So you can see like the costal cartilage and then the rib coming off like this. And you'll see that we have muscles that are sandwiched in between the ribs. And they're called intercostal, intercostal muscles. Intercostal literally means between the ribs. Costal is the ribs, right? That's why we call this these blue cartilages the costal cartilages. So there are intercostal muscles, and there are two layers of them. There's internal intercostals and external intercostals. This first layer that you see right here, like what this one's pointing to, these are the internal intercostal muscles. The external intercostal muscles start a little bit further back. You can, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see like right here, there's a line um, and they go back in this direction like this. So this one would be the internal intercostals. Here we go. This is pointing to the external intercostals. You can see it's still between the ribs, but it's a little bit further back. Uh, here, this is down. We already talked about these, but pointing to the obliques, right? So we have external obliques shown on this side. So this is the external oblique. And then on this deeper side, you guys see the internal oblique. And this right here is just showing you the aponeurosis. Um, or the, the connective tissue fibers that cover the rectus abdominis. Okay, so that's why that looks white right there. 
This is showing us the deepest of the abdominal muscles. Um, on the, the lateral and posterior, like this, the lateral and posterior aspects of the abdomen, we have three layers of muscle, the external obliques, internal obliques, and then this deep layer here, which is called transversus abdominis. A transversus abdominis because the fibers go horizontally like this, which is in a transverse fashion. A transversus abdominis. Here you guys can see the muscle in the lower leg um, at the posterior, um, the posterior portion of the, the lower leg. So Remember, we had like two major muscles here. Um, there's a superficial muscle up top, and then there's like a thinner muscle that's underneath. This is pointing to the large superficial bulge at the back of your calf, and that is the gastrocnemius. Okay, and there's a C in here, um, gastrocnemius. That's like um, the back of your legs, like when you stand on your tiptoes, um, <clears throat> you can see how your, your calf muscle bulges. That's this region right here. This again is moving us up to the top of the back of the leg, right? You can kind of see the gluteus maximus right here. You can see the popliteal region at the back of the knee right there. So this is showing us the, what we would call hamstrings. Um, the hamstrings are used to flex the knee. Um, the muscles in the posterior thigh there. We have one on the lateral side, and then we said we have two on the medial side. There's this one on top, and then you can see this one that kind of sticks out underneath as well. The one on top we mentioned earlier is the semi-tendinosis. Okay, semi-tendinosis. This is pointing to the one underneath. So I tried to like add a couple arrows so that you can make sure you understand that this is pointing to this deeper muscle right here that sits underneath the semitendinosus. And that's the semimembranosus. Okay, the semimembranosus. So I kind of think like membranes, like flat. So this looks kind of like this flattened part underneath. Um, or you can remember semitendinosus is on top, the semimembranosus is underneath on the bottom. Um, this muscle right here is showing us um, this like superficial muscle in the outer, um, like the outer thigh region, it's right here. This muscle is called the tensor fascia lata. Hey, the tensor fascia lata. And then you can also see like the muscles down here, the thigh, the front of the thigh. So this is the outside, so that would be the vastus lateralis. Um, in the middle, the biceps femoris. Okay, so this is um, asking for the ligaments of the knee joint. Um, you can see that this is the femur up here. And then you're looking at the tibia on the medial aspect of the leg and then on the other side you can kind of see the fibula poking out a little bit so we're looking at the medial aspect of the knee right now um, we have these two ligaments that are located outside the knee joint like on the outsides of the knee and those are called collateral ligaments so we have a, la uh, a medial collateral ligament and a lateral collateral ligament or you could also name them based on the bone they connect to. So there's the tibial collateral ligament and the fibular collateral ligament. Um, this is connecting to the tibia. So you could call it the tibial collateral ligament. Or instead of tibial, you could say medial collateral ligament because that is the medial aspect of the knee. Um, <clears throat> there is one on the other side too. So like if you look at this side of the knee, this is the ligament that's connecting to the uh, fibula. So that would be the fibular collateral ligament 
or you could also say lateral collateral ligament. Uh, this though is pointing to the ligament here at the very back of the knee. These ligaments are the cruciate ligaments. They're the ones that are inside the joint capsule. There's one that's anterior and there's one that's posterior. This is the back of the knee. I mean, you don't see the patella. Um, you can see this kind of deep groove between the condyles. This is the back of the knee. Uh, and this really kind of easy to see ligament is the posterior cruciate ligament. Um, <clears throat> this here is showing you one of the cartilage pads that's present um, in the knee. So between the femur and the tibia, where all that weight is bearing down between the bones, we have two cartilage pads. Um, they're called the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. So you just have to see what side of the knee you're on, the more medial side or the more lateral side. I know that the, um, the tibia side is medial and the fibula side is lateral. So this uh, cartilage pad right here that this is pointing to is the medial meniscus. Okay, the medial meniscus. Uh, this is pointing to this ligament right here, right? We looked at it a second ago, but this is the ligament that attaches to the fibula. So that's the fibular collateral ligament, or you could say lateral collateral ligament. Uh, this is pointing to the same thing. Um, this here is pointing to the ligament that's on the front of the knee. Right? I can tell that this is the front of the knee because this is where the patella is. Right, The kneecap or patella is situated right in here inside this tendon. And in order to see this ligament, you actually have to pull the um, patella aside and bend the knee back and then you can actually see this ligament. This is the one that's in the front of the knee. So this is the anterior cruciate ligament. Okay, the anterior cruciate ligament. When you hear people say that they tore their ACL, um, this is what they're talking about injuring. Okay, this is um, showing us the hip joint. Um, if you're taking my anatomy class right now in the fall of 2020, um, you do not have to learn this, but future semesters will. Um, and this is the hip joint. So you can kind of see like the bones of the pelvis, right? The ilium is up here. Um, the pubic bone is right here in the front and the ischium is in the back. And that's how these, um, these ligaments are named, whether they're attaching to the ilium right here, the pubic bone in the front, or the ischium in the back. And then they all come and attach to the bone of the thigh, which is the femur. So this ligament right here that attaches the femur to the ilium is called the iliofemoral ligament. Okay, the iliofemoral ligament. This one um, right here is attaching to the pubis, right? The pubis is the pubic bone in the very front of the pelvis. So it's connecting the pubic bone to the femur. So it's called the pubofemoral ligament. The pubofemoral ligament. This is showing us the back of the hip joint um, and the bone down here, like the back of the pelvis is the ischium. So this ligament's attaching the ischium to the, fe the femur and this ligament is called the ischiofemoral ligament. Okay, ischiofemoral. So the last thing as far as the hip joint goes is um, you can see right here this little connective tissue band that circles around the joint um, and that circles around the acetabulum. If you think about the hip joint, the 
um, the pelvis has this deep cup right here where the femur sits to form that ball and socket joint. Um, the acetabulum is this connective tissue that curves around, or the acetabular labrum is this connective tissue that curves around to try and deepen the cup and help to hold the femur in place. Um, that's a labrum. That's like the function of a labrum, but this specifically goes around the acetabulum. So we call it the acetabular labrum. Um, a few more things, just looking at the different um, classifications of the joints. Um, when we classify the joints, we can classify them structurally or functionally. So right off the bat, like the question says, identify the functional classification of this joint. So you need to know which classifications are functional and which ones are structural. The functional classifications describe the amount of movement that the joint allows. So the three classifications are um, amphiarthroses, diarthroses and synarthroses. So those are the choices if it asks for the functional classification. If it asks for the structural classification, the choices are fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. Okay, um, but the specific examples match up. So like if a joint is fibrous, it's a synarthrosis. If a joint is cartilaginous, it's an amphiarthrosis. If a joint is synovial, it's a diarthrosis. For most examples, um, like they're gonna match up like that. So um, this is showing us the intervertebral joint, right? The joint between the vertebrae, where we have you know, two vertebral bodies coming together with that cartilage disc between them. So this is asking for the functional classification. This joint is a amphi arthrosis. Okay, amphiarthrosis. That's a joint that allows a little bit of movement. Not highly movable, but each of these little intervertebral joints allows for a slight little movement as we flex and extend the spine. Now this is asking for the structural classification of the joint. Okay, remember the structural classifications are fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. Okay, so you've got to know that right off the bat. Um, this joint is a cartilaginous joint. Okay, cartilaginous. Um, cartilaginous joints don't have a lot of space between the bones and they typically have this thick cartilage pad present between them. Um, identify the functional classification of this joint. So the functional classification, again, is how much movement it allows. Um, this is the hip joint, um, and the hip joint allows a lot of movement. So that's a diarthrosis. If a joint's a diarthrosis, it allows a lot of movement. If it's a synarthrosis, it allows no movement. The way I remember that is a diarthrosis can be in all different positions, right? You can move it in all different positions. So diarthrosis different, the D's match up. Synarthrosis is always in the same position, okay? The S's matches up, synarthrosis, same. Same position all the time. It doesn't allow for any movement whatsoever, never moves. Identify the structural classification of this joint. Um, structurally, the hip joint here is um, referred to as a synovial joint. A synovial. Identify the specific type of joint. Um, in the lab, we talked about the specific types of different synovial joints. So like the hip, the shoulder, the elbow, the knee, we've got all different types of joints. So if I tell you, I want you to give me the specific type of joint, don't tell me, you know, diarthrosis or synovial. I want you to tell me the specific kind of joint that this is. The hip joint is a ball in socket joint. Okay, ball in socket. The shoulder is another example of a ball in socket joint. 
Okay, there's a deep a ball in a deep socket. The specific type of joint. Um, this is showing us the knee joint, um, and the knee is a hinge joint. Okay, that's the same thing at the elbow, um, the joint between the humerus and the ulna is another hinge joint. It allows movement along this one plane, right, this flexion and extension, it's a hinge joint. Identify the specific type of joint. Um, this is an intertarsal joint, so a joint between the tarsal bones. The tarsal bones are relatively square bones. Right? And the joint between them has these like flat surfaces um, or flat planes that glide along each other. So this is a plane joint. Okay? Um, if I showed you the carpal bones, that would be the same thing. That's also a plane joint. Here, identify the specific type of joint between the first metacarpal and the carpal. So the first metacarpal bone, the metacarpal bone of the thumb, and the carpal bone that it sits on, this is kind of a, a rare um, instance of a saddle joint. This was the specific example I wanted you guys to know for a saddle joint. It literally looks like a saddle um, is sitting on like the horse's back for a saddle joint. Here, these, again, specific type of joint, all of these joints between the metacarpal bones and the phalanges um, or the interphalangeal joints, okay, these are all condylar, condylar joints. Um, it's a condyl, a nice rounded process um, that fits in a nice little depression, okay, condyl. These are really common. Identify the structural classification of this joint. Again, structural means that it must be fibrous, cartilaginous, or synovial. This is the, um, the joint between the skull bones, right? Remember the skull bones are different bones when we're born. And as we grow, they fuse together. Ultimately, when they fuse together, they have these strong fibers that interweave them and hold them very firmly together. So that is a fibrous joint, fibrous. The functional classification, these joints do not allow any movement, right? You don't wiggle your school bones around. So there's no movement, which means they're always in the same position. So S for same means that these are synarthroses. Okay, or this is a synarthrosis. The last thing, and I don't have a bunch of examples of this, but the last thing that you guys needed to know for this exam were the different types of movement. Um, and there are all different types of movement that you guys needed to know, right? Rotation, um, circumduction, uh, abduction, adduction, but this is kind of the way that the, the question will be shown to you. Um, <clears throat> so identify the type of movement. So this is the movement that's starred right here on this side. You can see the, the arm is moving in this direction, right? So the elbow is moving from here to here. Okay? That is flexion. So the answer to this would be flexion. Okay? You're decreasing the angle between these two bones. That is flexion. Uh, the other kind of opposite of that, so we're starring this one over here. So if the arm were moving, instead of flexion like this, the arm's moving the opposite direction. So you're increasing this angle between these two bones. That is extension. Okay, again, there are lots of different movements. I don't have all of the examples on here, but you should be familiar with all of the types of movements that we talked about in class as well. Okay, guys, I hope that's helpful. Um, again, this doesn't encompass every single possible question, but it's a lot of them. So if you're comfortable with all of this and you're comfortable with the way that these questions are gonna be asked, then I think you should do just fine on the lab practical. Okay, good luck.